Right, so we've got a round container. Oasis has been put in. It actually has water source either side. Pot tape can go across if this is not firmly fastened. And we're going to take some leather fan. Now that's actually got a breakage, I think, or a bend. Might keep that for later. Now the number of pieces that we use depends on the spacing that we use working around. So you can see that piece if you're going to use it. If you want it on the perimeter, it's got to be more of a single. And then you'll bring that up into the foam in your step. So we're working our way around. Clean that off, so that's good. In she goes. Around it goes. Now what we're trying to do is have these approximately coming out at a fairly similar distance. And we're also working out whether we plan for another foliage in between. So if we have another foliage in between, then for colour, and that works quite well with the base, one piece in between the leather furred coming through here. It's a little bit longer, so I'll just trim that down. Coming around. Next piece. And you'll notice that I'm holding this right at the very end of the stem and going into the foam, so right close to the foam so I can feel how far it's going into the foam to ensure that it's getting the maximum water source. So we're moving our way around with the foliage. Now should you do a base up first? Interesting question. Some people like to, to get the parameters of size. Others like to start with the centre and work their way down and both methods are quite correct. So it really is just up to the individual. It's a little bit of cypress. If we decide to use that, we're not using a one piece. We're continuing with the pattern. So it could be that we do miss one, then we come around, miss one, come in here, or you can do it on every single piece. Notice this cutting here. So that's giving us a nice round base. And as I say, we could continue with the cypress if you wanted it more solid all the way around. And it's also possible for us to use a piece of straight cypress that might, in fact, come in to be our centre. But that one is the most important one to place because it's got to be straight. And if it's not straight, it's worth playing with because you want to make sure that it's right. Why? because from any angle, this has got to be neutral. Now in projections, if we do put more foliage in, as we work down, we're looking at a projection that is taking us from the tip to the perimeter. Now that's an important aspect, because if you come out too far, you'll actually start to throw the shape. So that one is borderline from here to here. So you can do that if you want. I can come in Safer is a little bit closer. And we're starting to build up. I'd also give the advice that if you're using flowers such as roses, if their own foliage is good, then you may not need to use the amount of foliage we just have used. Because you're going to have your rose leaves. But they've got to be good quality. Now, we can just bring up a bit of the colour. Let's just brought that back cypress back a bit, so I'm going to come from either side to straighten it up. And that's just giving us a little colour blend coming through and down. If that does spike through the flowers, it's not a feature, it's just to be complementary. And we again have to make sure that that works within the projections that we're trying to create. So we can keep coming around with that. If we've got little offcuts of our fern, the offcuts can just gently come in towards the radial point. And if you choose to mix in another foliage, again, just make sure that by contrast, it's round. So there's a little bit of Ming fern going in here. 
It's a good filler. It's not inexpensive, however, but given that this is going to have roses, we can afford more than likely to do this and we do have a nice ceramic. Work over your bin. We'll just separate those so you can see a little more clearly. Always better to use a brush on your bench rather than your hands. Me saying that because if there's any thorns on your bench, they'll get you. Now, those leaves are going to be trimmed back a little bit and double check your rose to make sure that it's in good condition. Nice sharp angle. Make sure this centre one looks upwards. And if it doesn't look upwards, then I'm going to say choose another one because it's directional and it should be neutral facing straight up. Preferably a smaller rose as well. And there we go, coming up with our height. Now again, that's the most important placement of all. If that's not straight from your different angles, we've got a problem. That leaf will probably come in, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. All right, now, some like to do their focal up here and then do their surround. Perhaps we'll do that. So in doing so, what we're doing there is creating our very structured shape with our roses. Now the amount of space that you use between these is very much determined by what your cost structure is that you're working within. So if you had another flower, you could actually be working in between. It's slightly bigger. We're looking for the sizes. So this is giving us our parameter as we work our way around. So we're going to have another rose in here. Good sharp angle when you're cutting. Preferably try and cut away from your hand so you don't have injuries. And that is giving us our colour all the way around the base. A little bit of high and low too. So if you had a secondary flower, they would work in between. Let's soften it down by way of look. Your bigger roses, we have more open roses and they still should have solid centres, we're able to come into our next layer. So that's going to build us in. So this is a very traditional shape and we're going to work our way around. Now, if you were short on foliage, it would be possible if your rose leaves are good, you may find that you're able to use, and I don't think these are good enough, but if they were, we'd be able to use the stem insert and we could actually use those as an extra filling foliage. But they're a little bit soft, these leaves, that one's a little bit torn. So, you know, we've got a few problems with regard to showing those, which is a bit unfortunate because it's really nice to build up that natural foliage with regard to the roses. Um, if I wanted to use this stem, cut that, cut that there, so that that's ready to use. So that stem goes in nice and firm and gives that leaf good water source. Right, so we're working, we've got the line here. That's going to have to come off. Check our rose. And this is giving us another layer coming down. Now the distance that we come out here is very important because that has to work within the projections. If you break the projections, you're going to break the shape. Now is it possible to go bring that down much lower and just round that into a dome? And the answer is yes, that's another style of bowl. Um, but of course monetary wise, because we're using stems with regard to the roses, this is actually looking more money. So if it's domed, it's going to be usually a little more packed and that would suit some clients more. So that effect would be the same, the foliage would be the same except that section would be lower and we would just dome over. And either of those are quite 
um, correct. It's just a matter of one looks quite different to the other. But the actual structure, if you just condense that down, is in fact the same. So we've got some highs and lows coming through. All right. Now I'm just going to mix in a white flower and a tricky one, which are chrysanthemums. So bear with me for a moment. <coughs> 